It's only a few more seeds today, but we're doing something a little different. This is called perpetual spinach. And it's quite a thick leaf variety. If you look on your seed packets, it'll tell you that the best time to sow perpetual spinach is in April. Because they can harvest it June, July and into August. You can grow this all year long. August is a good time to re-sow your seeds. And the reason for that is, perpetual spinach is frost tolerant. So we're going to sow some in a container. And it's not a bad size one either. The idea is to get a big bunch of this perpetual spinach growing in this greenhouse all the way through autumn and winter so we can just pick leaves as we need them. But although the, this is a spinach, it's not actually a true spinach. It's actually a chard. It's a member of the beet family. But it does taste like spinach. It's just an hardier variety. So I think it's a perfect time to get some sown. Even more so because over the next 10 days or so, we're going to start and see a real big increase in temperature and sunshine. So that's going to be perfect to help us germinate these seeds and get these little plants on the way before it starts to drop cool again in autumn. Then hopefully between autumn and the end of the year, we should have a big bunch of these spinach leaves growing in this container. If you've never tried perpetual spinach before, you can start some now if you want to, knowing that you're growing something that is going to tolerate frost. I got these seeds from Wilco's and they've had them on sale, so 70% off all seeds. So we grabbed a couple of packs of them. And if you've sown spinach this year, you'll know what the seeds look like. The little round balls, slightly bigger than your brassica seeds, but still round. But when you get perpetual spinach, you'll see a massive difference. These are more like clusters, exactly the same as beetroot. But because beetroot seeds can grow more than one seedling from a single seed, I would assume that these do exactly the same. So I'm going to put quite a few seeds in here and try and get us that nice big bunch growing ready for those colder months. I'm also using some old compost that we've saved but I'm going to amend it so there's loads of nutrients in as well. We've got this container and this it's got a few lumps and stones in it. I can pick the biggest part out before I do anything. But I don't think it's going to bother these seedlings anyway because they are quite big seeds. So I filled it just a couple of inches shy of that top. Because what I'm going to do is cover this up once it's finished. So there's a good amount of space between that compost and top of this container. So we can protect it from things digging up seeds by putting a piece of glass over the top or some cling film which works just as good. But before we do anything we need to amend it. A covering of fish blood and bone all the way across top of this container. That's quite a good amount but we'll not have to add anything else to it after. And then I'm just going to mix that into that compost. Now we just need to level it out and I'll just bang it down to settle it a little. Because I'm going to add some of this new compost. So I just need to break that up a little bit. So now we'll level that out a little bit, creating a gap between compost and top of this container at the same time. And I'll give that a bit of watering as well. Now we've got some of these seeds on and I'll show you them a bit closer up so you can see that they are little clusters, not round seeds. And I'm just going to broadcast some, the big enough seeds to see. So I want to make sure I get a good amount of seedlings growing in this container. I 
hopefully we can keep this going until next spring. That's plenty on there. Save a few of those seeds for a smaller container. And then I'm going to press these seeds in so I know they've got really good contact with that compost. And then I'm just going to very lightly cover them. I'm not going to use colander because they're very big seeds so they're not going to need it. Just as long as we know we've covered them. You could sow some of these seeds outside as well and just offer a bit of protection when it starts to drop really cold just to get those plants established and now uh, we'll give it another water and that will be a spinach container all set up and now I'm just going to pop a sheet of glass over the top of there and that's going to keep some moisture in there while these seeds germinate and keep mice from digging them up at the same time so there we go that's that set up a spinach that's not a spinach that's a chard from beet family it's going to be interesting to see how these plants get on through autumn and winter but because we know that these plants are frost tolerant we shouldn't have much of a worry especially since I'm going to be growing them in this greenhouse or you could grow them outside in a cold frame or even in a raised bed with some fleece over the top for when the minus temperatures do start to hit. But I'm doing it like this because I know that spinach is a massive favourite of slugs. So I can keep it off at ground, away from those slugs, on that bench for the entire duration. And then we've got a really good chance of getting nice handfuls of fresh, homegrown, perpetual spinach between now and next spring. If you want to see how this container is going to get on through autumn and winter and what else we're going to be sowing, please hit that subscribe button, press that notifications bell and I'll see you next time. Enjoy your weekend. Take care.